Welcome to The Apartment Guys, where we dive deep into all things multifamily investing. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower real estate investors to reach their highest potential. Each week, host Tate Seamer interviews high-level guests from all over the industry who are sure to bring valuable, actionable ideas that will propel your career to the next level. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned investor, you are in the right place. And now your host, the apartment guy, Tate Seamer. Welcome to another apartment, guys. This is a cool one today. Just got done interviewing Mr. Dan Lukowitz. And we got deep into some really valuable stuff like how to get in brokers ears and get their attention and keep their attention. Super valuable pointers on stuff like that and on finding deals. And we go deep into some really valuable, actionable stuff. And uh, he's an expert in triple net leases and uh, that space. And we talk about that in depth. And I hope that you get a lot of value out of it. Want to draw your attention to www.investwithgreenlight.com. That is our landing page where you can go and download my ebook, which is called FIRE, stands for Financially Independent Retire Early via Real Estate Investing, or I'm sorry, via Apartment Investing. So again, FIRE via Apartment Investing. FIRE is Financially Independent Retire Early. The vision is creating enough passive cash flow through owning positive cash flowing assets, i.e. apartments that are paying for all of your life and your savings and your retirement and everything else. Imagine that. Imagine the level of freedom that you would have to do the things that you really want to do with your life, whether that's charity, mission work, uh, starting a new business, starting uh, a school. Uh, I mean, you name it. The vision is yours to name, literally. You name it. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, again, investwithgreenlight.com, download my ebook. Hopefully it plants some seeds uh, for you in the way of getting you started in a multifamily investing real estate career. Like that's a real thing. And uh, if you haven't already identified yourself as a apartment investor, uh, maybe it's time to think about doing that. Maybe it's time to make that mindset shift. Uh, this game is so all about mindset. And it's about what you believe to be possible for you, what you believe uh, that you're capable of. And sometimes that takes, uh, it, it, you know, stretching, right? Like stretching your vision, stretching yourself and becoming more and more versed in, um, in the art of living and the art of living large and, and the art of growth uh, per, per, professional and personal development. It's all an art as far as I'm concerned. And I think life is a beautiful thing when you look at it that way. So on that, let's jump into some expert level knowledge with uh, this Mr. Dan Lukowitz, who is a broker and uh, a, a net lease broker, has a lot of experience in apartments and multifamily. And uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this. Well, everybody, welcome back. Another episode of The Apartment Guys coming at you today. Special guest in the house, Dan Lukowitz, is a seasoned real estate veteran, over 15 years of experience in different facets of the real estate industry, has a real broad experience base and knowledge base. So he has a, a, a really great foundation to bring us a lot of value from. He started his career house hacking, which many of you have done and are, and are doing, um, and he quickly moved on to flip houses in and around Metro Detroit and eventually created a company called the Renaissance Real Estate Ventures, which specializes in ac acquisition, financing, renovation, and resale of single-family residential properties 
in Detroit, Michigan, beautiful, booming Detroit, Michigan, right? That's right. Um, I'm from Cincinnati. I, I, I fly through Detroit all the time. I'm, I, I've been there many, many times um, and vacation north of Detroit up in northern Michigan. I can tell you about that in a minute. But, um, so, uh, but before uh, joining Encore, Dan was a senior advisor at Fortis Net Lease, special, uh, Net Lease specializing in commercial real estate investment sales. Um, also is a uh, former business development executive for Amazon in Detroit, Michigan. That's pretty cool. Um, and currently, Dan is the director of investment sales at Encore Real Estate Investment Services and specializes in uh, the, the net lease world, shopping centers, medical office buildings, indus- industrial fulfillment centers, quick service restaurants, and auto- automotive repair and parts stores. Um, of lesser known and but very interesting fact, Dan possesses industry leading knowledge on cannabis cultivation and its impact on the economy in general uh, and industrial commercial real estate specifically. Actually, would love to talk to you a little bit about that as well. That is like a massive, massive economic trend slash force in the country right now and is a bit of the Wild West, but I, I'm interested in talking to you about that. Um, uh, and an expert in multifamily and the current ec- economic undercurrents facing this asset class uh, in today's post-COVID world, Dan often expresses the incredible opportunities for investors of all sizes. Most importantly, Dan has four lovely children and resides in Oak Park, Michigan with his fiance Brady and enjoys running, lifting weights, yoga, and playing acoustic guitar. We have a number of things in common, uh, Dan. I, I play guitar. I do yoga. I do some weights, I, not enough, um, but I do a fair amount of yoga. And so, uh, but Dan, welcome. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm really stoked to have you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. This will be great. Yeah, you bet. So, just kind of jumping in. Uh, if you don't mind giving us a little bit of color behind, uh, you know. Uh, the a little more behind the bio kind of yeah you know, your journey in the real estate world um what kind of shaped you and what was important to you along the way sure so for me it all started uh in about 2005 i created a company with uh, some very close friends of mine called disability made easy and that was a barrier free home modification company so essentially we would take properties and make them handicap accessible for individuals with terminal illness or a disability and mobility challenges so my perspective, I've always, I've always been, you know, the, the high power hustler sales guy. So I did all the sales and marketing, but I developed a close relationship with our project manager. And I'll never forget the day that we went out to one of, one of the sites for the first time. And I saw this old, functionally obsolete home that certainly didn't serve anyone, let alone someone who is in a wheelchair. And the project manager and I got out of the truck. He took out his, his pen and his graph paper. And in, I don't know, 90 seconds, he sketched this beautiful drawing of the front elevation of the home and how he would alter it to make it more functional. And I just remember thinking to myself, wow, you can take something that in its essence, it has value, right? It's a home, it's a property, it's a dwelling, it provides shelter, but it's really functionally obsolete. And, and you can make certain changes to make it livable and make it updated. And, and that was like really just emblazoned in my mind for quite some time. Mm-hmm. So fast forward a little bit to the middle of the recession, time for myself and my family to buy our first home. And I remember looking at properties that were move-in ready, you know, completely ready to go. In fact, I had an offer on one of them. And then I realized that there was a bank-owned property just down the street. The bank-owned property had been vacant for a number of years. It was in awful condition. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was actually worse than awful condition because it was renovated poorly many years ago. Oh, that was the worst. That's the worst, right? So I decided- mistakes and all that. Exactly, exactly. So I decided I'd purchase that property. And instead of hiring a contractor to do labor, I would subcontract out all of the individual parts myself. And I told each, con- each subcontractor, hey, I'm going to pay you a little bit more money, but I'm going to be in your hair. I'm going to be annoying. I'm going to be asking you all these questions because my goal was to learn how to do everything. Not mm-hmm. so that I could do it myself, but so that I could manage the process. My friends, friends would joke with me at the time. They'd say, Dan, what are you going to do when you're done renovating your house? So I said, I'll buy another one. And that's exactly what I did. I bought another one and another one and another one. I started being a red dealer at sheriff sales every week at you know, tax auctions. And I started buying a lot of distressed property. And for me, 
there was nothing quite like going into a property that had great bones, but just needed something new. And, you know, some of my greatest experiences in that part of my life are, you know, some of these incredible 1930s, you know, Tudor style homes in Detroit that, you know, we went in there and we, we kept the original woodwork and, and the paneling, the, the charm and the windows, but we added things like, you know, forced air, got rid of boilers and radiators and, and, and you know, made the, 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 the home beautiful and functional. And, and then, you know, the, the best part about it is that somebody would move in there and, and, and appreciate that, that thing that you did. So I, I was very involved. Um, I, I, I did this in the suburbs for a number of years. And as the recession wore on and, and prices started coming back, really the inventory dried up uh, and prices really elevated. Now, a little known fact is that the city of Detroit is probably about seven or eight years behind the rest of the country in the foreclosure crisis. So all I did was I merely leveraged my contacts at the banks and institutions and started buying property in the city of Detroit. We rebranded the company, called it Renaissance Real Estate Ventures, bought a bunch of trucks and dumpsters and you know, box trucks and equipment and started managing crews and running around all over the city. Um, doing this in single family and then underwriting a lot of multifamily and spinning those off to syndications with some of my colleagues. So as time wore on, I was always, you know, for, for most of this experience, I was doing this as, as a side project, even though it was, it had the most of my energy and my passion and hustle. And I was working for, like I said, as a, a business development executive at Amazon, I'll never forget the day I left that company, great company, but the day I left that company, I'll never forget. I was in the shower. I said to myself, Dan, how many houses would, would you need in order to replace your income. And keep in mind, I, was a, I, I had a great job at, Am, at Amazon. And the answer was 20. So I went out and I bought 20 properties, I renovated them. Instead of holding them for cash flow, and I ended up creating a model where I would renovate them and then resell them to investors. But I really, for me, that was an amazing time because I was able to totally liberate myself and step into the, you know, the, the, the world of being a, a 100% you know, um, a business owner, which was incredible. Um, after a few years of doing that, I was approached by a net lease brokerage and this idea of becoming a commercial broker was very lucrative to me because you know, I went from the hands-on boots on the ground, right? What I would used to call when people asked me what I did, I would say that I was an adult daycare professional because essentially I was just babysitting contractors. You know, I was going and getting paints. I was making sure, you know, when things got stolen, I was there filing police reports and I was there to pick up the mess and, you know, make sure that this contractor did this right and this did that right. And when the idea of becoming a broker where I could be completely passive, right? I could work from anywhere in the world on my own time. I didn't really have to put up any of my own money or, or right. raising money other than marketing expenses. And I could be involved in these incredibly large transactions, help people do deals, which I love doing, and take a, a substantial fee. That, that really became another transition point in my life. And that, that's, that's what's led me to be, be a, you know, a net lease broker. And, and today, that's where I focus um, almost 100% of my time. Super exciting. So much to unpack there. Uh, I mean, I think right from the very beginning, you started with your story about seeing, uh, was it, a, it was a uh, kind of an assisted living situation or a, a home that you it were going to It make? was a home where somebody had unfortunately gotten into, you know, a, a car accident that, you know, made them wheelchair bound for the rest of their life. Yeah. So, so, so here, here was a home that you basically saw, you, you caught the vision there yeah. for what one of my very early mentors would call highest and best use. Exactly. Like you saw something in that property that it wasn't currently being used for and uh, which was a higher use than what it was currently being used for, made it more valuable therefore. Exactly. And that kind of seared into your memory or seared into your thinking. And you took that with you to into the single family space and uh, foreclosures and, and whatnot. We have some commonalities there too. I, uh, my partner, Carl York and, and myself, uh, we, we flipped single family houses here in Salt Lake city for solid for about six years. Uh, and, kind of gave it everything we, we had. Um, and you know, we're in multifamily and in larger scale, you know, apartment communities because we, uh, you know, are, we're, we're not, I'll, I'll put it this way. We're not in still in single family for a reason, mm -hmm. right? Like same, same I with call, you. I call it a, a gateway drug. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and I'll say this, and I know that a lot of listeners are going to be able to relate. It's a tough paycheck, you know, yeah. and it's risky. Oh, it's yeah. you're putting up your own money. 
Um, you're putting things your go wrong. things go wrong all the time. You're putting trust in, in the hands of subs that a lot of times you don't know or, or have experience with. And in these markets right now, it's hard, hard, hard to find subs yeah. that are available. Good ones aren't available. And so like flipping houses is you're not building wealth. You're flipping for a paycheck at the end of the deal. Uh, and you know, buy and buy and hold single family, uh, or, you know, say nightly rental type, you know, those to me, if you're holding on to stuff, that's a different story. That's right. That's when you're truly building wealth and growing uh, a portfolio. And that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. um, I wish we would have kept, you know, 25% of what we flipped. Uh, and we, you know, the, the, the truth of the matter is we just, and I, I, maybe some listeners can relate to this. We just didn't scale up enough to the point that we had enough revenue to support the company and keep property. Like we, right. unfortunately we just had to keep kind of keep kicking the can down the road and keep paying our bills with the houses we were flipping. Sure. Um, so anyway, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a massive upgrade for us to, to be in the space that we're in. It took us a long, hard road to get here, but, um, yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you kind of went it a little different direction. You got into the brokerage space, which I, I have a license. I have, my, I have a real estate license here in, in Utah, uh, you know, residential realtor license and have done enough commission work to understand the allure of, of that, um, the, you know, good, good brokers in commercial real estate, whether you're triple net or or, uh, you know, re representing sellers or, or, or buyers or what, whatnot. Um, if you're good at what you do and you're in a fairly dynamic market, uh, you're, you're going to do just fine <laughs> financially. Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, our, our, a little side note, do you invest on your own at all? Do you hold, hold investments? Yeah. So, you know, I actually got out um, at the end of 2019, which I think was great timing um, of the, mm. the single family rental game. Yeah. I am now, though, getting um, more active in syndications. And in um, interestingly enough, there's actually a, a, a place to, so to speak, flip commercial properties, not in so far as, as the, you know, the common way that you and I think of when we talk about residential properties. But for example, um, in, in, and we can get into this more if you'd like, but with shorter term leases, oftentimes the cap rate goes up significantly. Sure. And there's an opportunity either by doing what's called a blend and extend, which is where you work out a deal with the tenant to increase the term, but decrease the rent. Mm -hmm. And in that example, even though you would think like, why would you ever want to decrease rent? That's your, your net operating income. The answer is, is that your cap rate goes down significantly and the value of the property goes up significantly as well. So that's, that's one way that you can do that. Another way is to you know find below... Um, market rents and then to re-tenant the property with a, a tenant that's paying more in line and then longer term lease, lower cap rate, okay, higher NOI, same thing. So I am getting more active on the acquisition side um, of that, that uh, you know, those particular types of deals uh, at this point. Mm -hmm. Super fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can tell you love what you do. Yeah, no question. Yeah, that's super important. I, I mean, I, I think, you know, all the guests that I've had on this show have a particular zest and, and love for not only what they do work wise, but generally, you know, what they're doing with their, their overall, their lives, their family, yeah. their, uh, whether, you know, it's their church or their um, community schools like everybody is uh focused and on point and i i just feel really blessed to have folks like you on dan that you know know what you're up to and and have it going on and and are eager to share it with other other people sure. um yeah. so so yeah so cool so um what's the what's the day-to-day -day look like for you uh in the in the uh triple net world. It's, it's a, it's a space that I'm honestly not uh, quite real familiar with in the commercial real estate space. Uh, yeah. 
some of the brokers that I've worked with on other types of projects also do, uh, you, you know, net lease type stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, I'd love to, love to get a little more of a glimpse into that world. Yeah. So, you know, it's it, day to day is a hunt. I'm, I'm constantly hunting for listings. So mm-hmm. I have an assistant and I've got, uh, an intern and together the three of us work, um, you know, creating databases, cold calling, sending out emails, um, usually what I like to do is leverage my recent closing. So in the last month I've sold two Wendy's, I'm going to sell another mm-hmm. Wendy's next Monday. So mm-hmm. we create databases of all the Wendy's owners in the country and say, Hey, I'm Dan Lukowitz. Here's an example of two or three Wendy's deals, very similar to yours that we just listed. We had eight offers. We sold above asking price. Mm-hmm. I'd love for you to send me over the details of your property and no obligation, no charge. I'm going to put together a value proposal for you, letting you know what it's worth. And so, you know, I always find that in, in anything, I mean, my motto is add value and everything else follows. So I'm always leading with a value proposition. So I'm coming to these investors saying, hey, you've got property. I've got knowledge, tools, experience. Let me give you something for free. Let me give you a value yep. proposal. Yep. If you want to list your property, great. If you just want to know what it's worth, great. And, and that's my way of getting in the door and making sure they know who I am and giving them something that's of value to them so that if and when they're ready, they can take the next steps and, and, you know, we can list their property. So we're constantly, you know, doing business development, finding new investors to work with. And then obviously at any given time, I could have three, four five listings. So constantly, you know, emails back and forth, uh, mm-hmm. reviewing letters of intent, finding replacement property in 1031 exchanges. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's really it. And then, and then pushing the deal towards closing. So communicate with title company. Um, ordering due diligence documents like environmental reports and inspections, um, ordering estoppels and SNDAs from tenants, just, you know, kind of being a liaison, being that, that, that person who's kind of, you know, I almost look at it like I'm on, on the coach on the floor and I've got all these different players and I'm just making sure that, that, that the game is played smoothly and that everybody is happy. Hmm. Yeah. That's a good way of looking at it. I like that. Uh, I've kind of, kind of sit in your shoes a little bit. I've got a team and, and, uh, partners, uh, you know, that are, that are kind of equal in, in a lot of ways in some of these deals. Um, but I'm kind of the, you know, the, the point guy. And a lot of times the buck stops with me. Most of the time it does actually. Um, and so, you know, looking at it kind of like you're, observing a team on a field and, and yep. everybody's working towards a common objective and playing a good role. Right. You know, we're Salt Lake city's home of the Utah jazz right now. We're best team in the NBA. So we, <laughs> we can, we can brag a little bit about that, but uh, it, it's, it's so fun to watch a, a really good team do their work. And yeah. uh, you know, it, what a gift to have great team members and great systems and processes in place to be able to really cook it in your business, you know, Absolutely. that's awesome. Um, cool. So in your, uh, what, what are you seeing? I, I know that you don't spend a ton of time in the multifamily space these days, but let's talk a little bit about apartments yeah. and, and what, you know, your kind of high level view is of what's happening in that, in that space. Sure, days. absolutely. So I think it's, it's an incredible time. I mean, we're seeing cap rate compression, which is obviously, you know, lower returns, higher prices all across the nation in multifamily. It's almost like, you know, multifamily, not unlike residential, had been appreciating at such a rapid rate over the last decade. It was almost like we we're kind of, you know, looking around saying, wait a second, when is this going to be over? And, mm-hmm. and, and prices have only continued to climb. I mean, I have clients that are selling some net lease properties and, and trading into um, you know, multifamily in, in California, for example, and they're looking at, at, at low 4% cap rates. So, right. I mean, those numbers to me are incredible. And that's one of the reasons why I'm such a fan of, of net lease is because of the, you know, at this point in time, cap rates have gotten so low in multifamily that net lease, which has its inherent security, stability, and, um, and you know, um, guaranteed income, so to speak, it makes it even more attractive. Um, I would just say that, that I think that we're in an interesting time further because of what's going on with the pandemic. I like to, to focus on an interesting um, kind of conundrum in the system, which is that if we rewind back to March of 2020, when really start, st- stuff started really hitting the fan, you know, mm-hmm. the CARES Act came out 
And the SBA granted a six month deferral for anyone who had an SBA mortgage, right? Which included a lot of property owners. At the same time, we had rental moratoriums and eviction moratoriums across the country. Some of them at a state level, some of them, I don't, don't ask me how the CDC can regulate whether or not somebody has to pay rent, but the CDC came out and said, if you make under $99,000 a year and you've been impacted by the pandemic, you don't have to pay your rent. Mm -hmm. So fine. So all's well when the tenant doesn't have to pay the rent and the landlord doesn't have to pay the mortgage, right? Because it's just a pass through. This guy's not getting paid by this guy, so he doesn't have to pay this guy. Right. Now, interestingly enough, in six months later, in I guess that would be September, the SBA stopped that deferral, that abatement on mortgage payments. So those more eviction moratoriums and rental moratoriums continued. So what I think is going on behind the scenes is you've got a lot of landlords who are in very tough positions because they may still may not be able to collect rent from their tenants, but at the same time, they have to pay their mortgages. So I think that if somebody's a multifamily investor, they should really keep their eyes open because I, I personally believe that over the next quarter or two, we are going to see a lot of distressed um, landlords mm -hmm. coming to market because they have to. Mm -hmm. So if you're a multifamily investor, I would definitely focus in on that. I would you know, be running lists all the time of, of um, you know, delinquent mortgages. I would see you know, where people are at in terms of their payments. And just keep, keep in mind that, that cap rates are incredibly low, but it doesn't matter what the cap rate is if you can't pay your mortgage. So I think that this is a great opportunity for investors who are savvy to pick up, you know, great deals in the multifamily space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is a, uh, I mean, it's a, an unprecedented environment uh, right, right now, needless to say for all of us and yeah. in all of real estate commercial, especially and, and multifamily. And as you were kind of talking about the last year and, and what we just went through and how stressed the, the space, the multifamily apartment space really got, mm -hmm. it strikes me how resilient, uh, this, these products, this, this asset class is oh, yeah. like, I mean, we, we just went through probably worst case scenario, like, you know, I, I mean, I, I guess we could have a worse pandemic and et cetera, but like, we went through something that nobody obviously saw coming, but something that we, unlike anything we had ever been through before. Right. And here we are at coming out the other side of it and apartments are hotter than ever. They're more yeah. expensive than ever. Uh, these, these markets, uh, the hot markets are as hot as, as can be and very competitive. Uh, and, you know, but like you say, Dan, there's, there are deals out there, uh, there, you gotta be savvy and, and it, it's like, it's kind of like anything else right now. It really is about who, you know, because you know, the, the good doable deals right now that we're finding are off market and, you know, through brokers that are listing properties that are off market for whatever reason, the seller doesn't want to go to market. And, uh, and so, you know, they're, they're looking for buyers uh, that they know can close that have, you know, good track records and, and are solid. And, and we had a seller come to us um, cause she had heard of us through the grapevine in Oklahoma city and, and wants to sell us her stuff. So um you know, it, it, it's, but that was a, that was a, because we knew the right person who referred her to us. So, um, so, so yeah, I mean, this, this is a, a great opportunity uh, to talk to you, you know, being on the broker side of the equation, uh, you know, people like me and my team are, are constantly, uh, you know, working on relationships. Yeah with you, um, with brokers, um, we're, we're constantly, uh, you know, nurturing those and, and ultimately getting deals done, um, with, with folks like you. So let, let's just kind of talk broker relations for a yeah. sec. What would you say to somebody who is listening to this and going, well, Tate just knows the right people and he's got people bringing him deals and, you know, he's spent like, I can't get there. Or I don't know how to get there. Or what should I do to get there? Like what, yeah. are, what words of wisdom would you have for somebody like that? 
Yeah. So first of all, just to put it in perspective, I mean, the vast majority of my work is seller representation. Mm-hmm. If I've got a seller that is a client of mine and they have to buy something, I represent them. Or if something comes in a good referral, I represent them because there are so many buyers out there that are just, you know, they're working with everybody and, and, you know, my time is valuable. Your time is valuable. So yeah. it is important to set yourself apart. And there's a variety of ways you can do that. Number one, and and, and the basics of what I'm telling you, what I'm going to tell you are not very different from just the fundamentals of relationships in general. But number one is transparency and honesty. If you're coming to me and you just want to know what something's worth, I've got no problem doing that for you. But be honest. If you're not a buyer right now, be honest. If you are a buyer, then tell me what your parameters are, but make sure not only are they clear, but that you're going to follow through. If you say, hey, Dan, I need something at, at around a five cap, quick service restaurant in Michigan with 15 years or more remaining on the term with 5% rental escalations every five years or better, right? With 30,000 vehicles per day or better on that road, right? And I find you something that, that falls in those parameters, I fully expect that you're going to perform, right? Right, yeah. Otherwise, I, I know clearly that you're, you're, not, you're wasting my time. So that's, sure. that's number one. Number two is, is just like from the brokerage perspective, I have to be persistent to win business. Be persistent. I'll give you a, a real life example from today, okay? I just sold... Um, a nice size medical office building, $11.65 million about a month ago. Um, very highly sought after tenant. And I have a list of probably 12 people who have been reaching out to me, some of them every week, some of them every two or three weeks, for the last six months saying, Dan, as soon as you get something else like this, I want to buy it. And I could, you know, put all these guys' names in a hat and pull one out and sell it to that person. But, but there's one individual that has been so persistent, right? Following up all the time, asking me how it's going, asking me how my other deal is closing. This person even put together a letter of interest that I then sent to my client saying, hey, look, here's a party. They're hungry. They want to go. That got my client thinking. They then sent another letter saying, you know what? I don't even know what the terms of the deals are, but if, 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 it's, if, if they're similar to this or similar to that, here's what we would pay for that property. And guess what? As soon as I get those deals, guess who I'm going to give a call to? I'm going to give a call to that guy because He's been in front of me. He's been persistent. He's helped me to get the business, right? Mm-hmm. So you just have to be persistent, follow up, keep in touch with us. That's the most important thing because this, in this industry, people have a short-term memory and it's not, not for any negative reason. It's because you know, we're looking at hundreds of deals a day. We're talking to, to, to dozens or maybe even hundreds of people a day. So it's just mm-hmm. important to stay in front of people, to be transparent. And, and this is a rule in general. Always do what you say you're going to do. Period. Yeah. Very yeah. simple, but but very effective. So, so key. So key. And with brokers, like not only that, but do it in promptly. Like, yes. get back. And, and, you, know. And, you know, there's another thing too, is I think you have to be reasonable and you have to be, mm-hmm. especially in today's market, because, you know, I often find that there are buyers, not as much today because it's so much more competitive, but years ago, I'd bring them, let's say a seven and a quarter cap deal. And they'd be like, ah, I really need something in seven and a half cap. And when we would compare them together, I'd say, look, you're going to get 25 basis points better on this deal, but look at all this hair on the deal. Look at all these potential problems. Is it right. really worth that? Or do you want that security? So I think you have to listen to your broker. And, and, and also, you know, I think that it's, it's important um, to be reasonable, right? If you're in a market and I'm telling you, I just listed this property and I'm going to get 10 offers today. It's because... I listed something similar last week and got 10 offers. So, you know, come in with flexibility. If you have flexibility on your earnest money deposit, flex that. If you have Mm -hmm. flexibility on your due diligence and closing time, flex that. If you have some flexibility Mm -hmm. where you're willing to put some money, non-refundable, flex it. If you want quality property today, you have to be aggressive. Bottom line. There you go, guys. That's gold right there. There's uh, (laughs) rewind that one couple minutes and listen to that again, because that's it. I mean, that is the the hard truth of today's multifamily space and commercial space in general, but especially multi. I mean, you got to keep in mind in the commercial world, and Dan, I'd I'd be interested to see if you agree with me on this at this point, but multifamily is kind of the darling in the space. Would you say? You know, I think everybody's gonna have their bias, but to me, okay. the darling is your absolute triple net, you know, hmm. corporate guaranteed commercial real estate deal, main on main, you know, long term lease like Starbucks, you know, Chipotle. Yeah, yeah Chipotle stuff like that. is a great one. Yeah. Um, Chick fil A, maybe a yeah. Walgreens, something like that. Starbucks, there's a lot yeah. of them. Yeah. Because look, it's a coupon clipper. You sit at home, 
you don't pay the taxes, you don't pay the insurance, you don't pay for any maintenance or repair, you don't pay to shovel the snow or cut the grass or manage the property. It's as passive as it gets. Many of these properties have built in rental escalations to hedge against inflation. And the terms of the lease are, are, are set out now, right? They could be a 10, 15, 20 year lease and all the terms are set out now. And what's more, let's say, you know, let's say that that, that tenant isn't doing well in that location and they vacate. Well, many of these national tenants have hundreds or maybe even thousands of locations that mm -hmm. stand behind the guarantee on the lease. So if Walgreens mm -hmm. goes dark, they're still going to pay you rent for the rest of the lease. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that that's the, the absolute triple net, you know, main on main, you know, credit tenant. That's that to me is the darling. I can understand why, you know, your institutional grade, you know, major metro, you know, great condition apartment complex might be. But from my perspective, you know, there's things that are unknown. The management fees could change. Cap X could change, you know, yeah. so you, you might have to deal with higher, you know, eviction costs or rental moratoriums, or you might have to deal with, you know, increased expenses that year, taxes, insurance going up, all those things. I mean, to, to each their own, that's just my perspective at this point. Yeah. Okay. So, so would you say aside from the great uh, net lease deal that multifamily is kind of the darling in the commercial real estate world? Yeah. I mean, I, I like it. I know you, I know you want me to say it. So I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, I do like it. I think that there's, there's a lot of opportunity yeah. there and, and, you know, people always need a place to live. There's no yeah. question about that. And from an investment perspective, I'd rather have one boiler and one roof with a hundred doors than a hundred boilers and a hundred, hundred roofs for a hundred yeah. doors. So yeah, no question. I love that. And I just think that, you know, we're going to continue to see appreciation in, in rental rates and, um, you know, people always need a place to live. That's just the bottom line. It's yeah. just the bottom line. Yeah. And we talk about why multifamily all the time. So we don't, we don't need to get into the, into that conversation uh, today here. I, I am actually very curious about uh, what you would say to somebody whose interest has been piqued um, about the, the net lease uh, conversation. Like, you know, is there, I, I when people come to me and say, I'm really interested in taking a look at getting into apartments. There's a few audio books that I point them to. Yeah. There's a few podcasts I point them to. What would you say to somebody that says, this sounds really interesting. I want to take a deep dive into this. What, what's, yeah. I mean, what's a good, good, not bet? a lot of written resources. Unfortunately, I would say, you know, I have a show about commercial real estate. We focus a lot on net lease. It's called Dan on top. You can literally just Google Dan on top and find it. It's on Roku. It's on Amazon. It's on Apple TV. Um, I, I recommend that. I've interviewed some incredible people and we add a lot of value there. Um, we actually also have a course called the CRE Pro course, which is designed to teach people everything they need to know about commercial real estate. Um, it's designed more towards teaching brokers how to be incredible brokers, but all that, all that information is valuable for investors as well. So mm -hmm. I'd say those are some great resources. There is a good book by, um, by Alan Fruitman. Uh, it's called, um, you know, I'd have to look up the name, but it's a 1031 exchange book. It's pretty thin, um, but but those are great books. And I know it's not in response to your question, but if you're looking for a great book on multifamily investing, I highly, highly recommend Multifamily Millions. That mm -hmm. is an incredible book. It just breaks things down so simply about repositioning. And um, I just think there's tons of jewels in there for anybody who wants to get into multifamily. And again, if you want to get into net lease, you can always reach out to me and I'd be happy to be a resource. Well, it's okay. So first of all, multifamily millions, who's the author on that? Uh, I believe that's Dave Lindahl. L -I -N -D -A -L. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Dave's great. I didn't, uh, I didn't put him together with that book, but yeah, um, I'll look at, I'll look into that. I that's uh, hasn't been on my radar. So that's a great uh, that's, a, that's a great resource. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. So Dan, what's the best way for listeners to reach you if they want to talk triple net or yeah. anything else? Well, first of all, you can always find me on LinkedIn, Dan Lukowitz, L E W K O W I C Z again, L E W K O W I C Z. I'll also get about my cell phone for anybody who has commercial property and wants to know what it's worth. You can always reach out myself and my team would be more than happy to put together a complimentary, no obligation value proposal for you. Um, my cell phone number is 248-943-2838. Again, 248-943-2838. If there's anything I can do, or you just want to talk shop in commercial real estate, you know, give me a call and I'm happy to add value. Would you say that, I mean, it, you know, to me, if there's not books and podcasts and stuff about 
how to do this space well, would you say it's kind of like an unexplored territory to some degree? I mean, I, I, I yeah, mean, I think so for sure. I mean, I think that look from a commercial perspective, there's there's you know there's like 1.2 million residential realtors, and right now there's less than a million homes on the market. Right. Okay. In commercial, there's we we transact 400 billion dollars of transactions a year, and there's less than 50,000 agents. Yeah, so yeah. the opportunity is huge. Um, it's not known. It's not, it's uncharted and, you know, but it's exciting at the same time. And that's why we built our course because there just was not a great resource available to teach people about this. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. great. Awesome. Well, listeners, hopefully this has uh, sparked some inspiration for you and, in, in some direction. Um, obviously we're at, we're at my team, green light myself, we're, all in on apartments. And, um, you know, I, we have over 500 under contract right now, 500 units, and we just closed on, uh, 250 in central Ohio. And, um, we're, we're really, we're looking to tear those two markets up, Oklahoma city and Columbus, um, Ohio and, and own a thousand doors in each market by this time next year is, is our goal. Um, However, like, you know, everybody like multifamily is hot right now. And it's, you know, there's, there's f tons of podcasts on apartments and, you know, there's, there's tons of books on apartments and YouTube channels and like it's mainstream and there's conferences and you go to these conferences and there's 500 people there. Um, you know, there's, there aren't that many apartment assets in the, in the country there, I mean, there's a lot there's, but as far as like your ratios there, um, you know, maybe in mobile home parks and RV parks and, uh, and, and self-storage and those other asset classes are, have kind of also started to really pop and they're hot now too. And they're, you know, they're the cats out of the bag on those. Maybe this is a great, opportunity here listeners and like it might deserve your a little more due diligence on your part uh to see if there's untapped opportunity um i am a big believer in picking your lane and and you know picking one direction and and really be getting very very yeah. good at it would you agree with that dan totally no question yeah. no question about it i mean i i in my earlier years i suffered from what i call you know shiny object syndrome and it wasn't until I just said, you know, I'm going to be unifocused until I'm an expert in this. doesn't mean that later I can't investigate other things, but by spending all of your resources and time and energy and focus in one thing, that's yeah. really how you'd be successful. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's perfectly said. And, you know, multitasking in general is a myth, whether it's, whether you're multitasking in the moment or you're multitasking life, like it, it's really hard to do a bunch of good things well at the same time. And yeah. Uh, and this deserves this space, whether it's triple net or multifamily or single family or vacation rentals or whatever you're doing, it deserves your undivided. Sure. It really does. And the, the opportunity for financial freedom, financial independence is right here at your fingertips in this, in these spaces. It's a matter of just getting deals done. We're here to help any way we can with that. You know, that's why we do what we do every week on the podcast and, and we want to help people get deals done, uh, and you know, move the needle. So, um, but this has been very, very enlightening, Dan, um, uh, really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, shine, shine the light into uh triple net. I'm going to, um, it, it, you know, it's one of those things it's, uh, it's what the reticular activating system. Now that we've talked about it, I'm sure I'm going to see yeah. opportunities everywhere. And, um, <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, so that's super exciting. Um, Dan, is there, uh, is there any, anything else you'd like to say to the listeners before we sign off any final words of wisdom? Yeah. I mean, a few things just, you know, number one is take action. You know, I, I've, mm -hmm. I've been to these seminars, I've been to these events and I've seen so many people and, you know, 98% of them never do a deal. They just, mm -hmm. they just get like to sit around and talk about it and analyze and this and that. And, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be that 98%. You want to be the 2% yeah. that, 
goes ahead and takes action. So take action, take massive action. That's really the only thing we control is our action, our inputs. Yeah. Everything else will follow from that. So I think that's very important. And then the other thing too, is like, I would say, find a mentor, find some great educational content, a course, a book, reach out, ask questions. One of the most amazing things about our industry is that it's an industry that has an abundance mentality, right? Mm -hmm. There are so many people that are out here, you know, doing these podcasts, sharing information, Mm -hmm. sharing value that want to help. There's so many people who will answer the phone and will walk you through a deal. And Mm -hmm. sometimes it might mean that you got to bring that deal to them and make it worth their time. Right. But, but I did that, right. My, uh, my first dozen deals were me doing the legwork and partnering up, reaching up to somebody that knew way more than I did. And then guess what? Pretty soon we're partners doing deals together. Pretty soon yeah. now, I, now I'm training other people, but yeah. you're really in a unique p- position here with real estate being such an abundance mentality to, to network and connect with great people and really grow and then give back to others. Yeah, that's so well said. Uh, it, it, you know, this is, it, and you said it earlier in the podcast, uh, when you were talking about your business strategies, this is a value add economy now, yeah. guys. And like, you know, if you're if you're wondering what to do next, think about who you can serve next. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and think about you know, okay, here's Dan. He's he's dialed. He's got deals. He's he knows how to make things happen in this in this world. What value can I bring to him? You know, and and it doesn't have to be anything huge, uh, but if you're thinking along those lines in general all the time, you're going to be in, uh, you know, you're going to be doing deals. You're going to be finding money and that's really what it takes to, to get it done in, in this space. And, and, and I'll just also highlight what you said about the abundance mentality in this space. It's, I, I love it. I just, yeah. you know, it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do what I wouldn't do this business if, the overall culture in the business wasn't so generous and, and abundance mindset. Yeah. Um, it, it's, but it, it is, and it's, that's a, it, it's a gift for all of us because we, we get to all learn and grow together and, and be authentic and right. be humble. You know, I was thinking a lot about humility this morning and, and how, how key that is in, in a professional entrepreneur's life. Like, um, you know, the, the, the people that really shine in this space are the ones that leave their egos at the door. Um, for the most part, confidence is, is different. Um, yeah, but, right. uh, but, uh, you know, ego and, and, and arrogance is not, not a, not a good secret sauce for, for this business. But anyway, um, Dan, thanks so much again. Appreciate all of your wisdom. This has been fantastic. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you maybe in a year or so and uh, circling back around and seeing how things are going. You got it. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate right. it. You bet. Thank you. Yeah. Listeners, thanks for listening to another episode of The Apartment Guys. If you got some value out of this, a rating and review is always more than welcome. It means a lot to, to me and the podcast. And uh, other than that, have a great week and go get them. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to The Apartment Guys with Tate Seymour. Tate and friends are grateful to have you as a loyal listener. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, review, and share with friends on your Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or any other podcast platform. Also, check out Tate's YouTube channel for videos of many of these episodes and more. Until next time, take massive action steps and rock on.